Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to the 39th and final tutorial of this series. So this tutorial is going to be all about post processing, building our game. So the idea is we're going to make it look better and then we're going to build and test the game. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with everything else I have on this channel. And if you've enjoyed this series and feel like supporting a good cause, what I'm doing here, please feel free to check out my Patreon page where you'll get things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. And with that in mind, let's make this game look even better. So, post-processing. It's something a lot of people do get a little bit confused about because they don't fully understand what it is. So post-processing itself used to be part of the standard assets and it used to be image effects, but it's its own thing now and it is pretty cool because it can really make your game look better with just a couple of clicks. So what we'll do is we need to go to the asset store. So hold control, press number nine. And what you need to search for is post-processing stack. And this is a free asset from unity themselves they created this so don't worry about paying it and you just need to click import download update whatever this button is and it will bring it in for you no problem so when it's in you'll be presented with a post processing folder right here and to get all this working we need to go to wherever our camera is in this case it's on the first person character right here because our camera is there how do we get it working easy if we go into runtime and we just need to look for the script which is named post processing behavior and what this does is it attaches itself to here and then presents us with the ability to create a profile what's a profile a profile is a set of data which you define i.e you want it to have fog you want it to have bloom you want it to have motion blur and that is a single file in the assets that you can apply to any camera within the entire game you don't need to reset everything and set everything back up and all things like that you can just use that profile so let's create that profile so i'm going to stick inside my post processing folder right here top level right click create and let's go to post processing profile and let's just call this fps cam hit return or enter and over here in the inspector panel, you'll see a load of settings. Now, the best way to work around this and figure out what's best for you is to actually do this in play mode rather than do it in scene view, because then you'll be able to see how you can set your settings without having to worry. Does clicking this do anything? Does clicking that do anything? Does adjusting this do anything? So we're going to do it that way. So firstly, click on our first person character where we attach the post processing behavior script and drag and drop your profile onto here. Next, click back on the profile so we see all these. And now let's press play. We're not gonna see much at the moment. By default, it does have fog, but you know, that doesn't matter too much. So what we'll do is we'll pause the game and I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we'll just move out here because I think we'll get a better view of what's going on. So pause it. Now, first thing we're going to click is bloom so if we click the word bloom you'll see it's all grayed out now tick the little circle next to bloom and we should see in the background it does look a little bloomy if that is even a word so what we do now is we can change the intensity so let's set this to one and you should be able to see the sky in the distance is giving a bit more of a bloom effect so let's set the threshold a little bit lower 0.5 and you can see how that is now impacting what we see. You can play around, <clears throat> my voice went then, you can play around with these settings and never be afraid that you'll do something wrong. Sometimes you'll change things that doesn't make too much of a difference. But what I would recommend if you're using Bloom is to have the intensity, at whatever you have, but have the threshold at half of whatever you have. Don't go too mad with intensity because you end up with things like that. It goes crazy and also tick anti-flicker or anti-flicker for our American friends so I'd say those are the most important things when it comes to bloom if we click the word bloom again it will close it up another good one that we can work with is motion blur and realistically all we need to do is just tick motion blur because I feel it adds just enough feel to the game to kind of work as it is so if I resume this now we should be able to see just how kind of 
that looks. I feel that looks much better. Looks like there are some spiders oh, over there. Looks like there's some spiders over there. Well, again, don't be afraid to play around with the settings. So if we change this to the frame blending a little bit higher, we should be able to see how that has an impact. So it literally blends the frames and that's how the whole thing works. But by default, I think it's a pretty decent setting. Another one is vignette. Now vignette will add technically around the sides it will make it a little bit darker but it will give a deep dark impact of what the game is about so if you're making a horror game it might be wise to use vignette depending on how you want it to appear if your view is very focused you would have that quite high if you know you don't want it then you may as well turn it off there's no point having zero on that one so we can see just a little bit of that gives it that effect Another good one, especially if we're doing a kind of horror style game, would be grain. If we tick it, we can see little bits of grain on the screen, which give it that extra little, huh. you know, depth to it to make it look a little scary. Is that the right term to use? I don't think that is the right term to use, is it? So I'm going to take grain off. But before I do, don't forget, you can always play around with it. You can have just a little bit of grain about there if you wanted to. Uh, another good one is anti-aliasing and you can see how that has an effect on your game straight away. It gets rid of those I'd say glitchy light reflections that you get especially when you're using the normal maps so I would recommend having anti-aliasing on. There's plenty for you to play around with here you know never be afraid to select an option and play around with it and see what you can come up with because at the end of the day this is your game so let's just quickly explore what this world looks like with the post-processing settings that we have now so you can see how this is becoming much more like a game than we originally had So I would absolutely recommend taking some time and working with the post-processing stack. So already, like I say, look how different this looks and how much kind of more intense it can look. So that's what that is all about. Those effects are there for you to play around with. And because this is an actual live file, everything we've got now has saved. It's, it's literally saved and that's all there is to it. So I kind of like our settings there, so I'm going to keep them. So guys, I would recommend playing around with that, seeing what you can come up with, and there's different combinations that you can create and different effects that you can play around with. So let's move on to settings and building this game up. If we go to edit, and if we go to project settings and input, uh, not input, I don't know why I said input, it's player we want. This player is not representative of our player itself. It is the game player, or rather the application playing the game. Now, what we can do is have an icon, and we can also have a splash screen. Now, you're thinking, yes, we've already created a splash screen, Jimmy. That's not what it means. I will show you a little bit further on in this tutorial what exactly it does mean. So, in our textures folder, in our actual textures folder. I'm going to drag and drop these two textures and all these are is a little splash and an icon. They're just clips or snippets of the thumbnail that I use for the videos. So if we head back to the player settings and let's go through these. Company name, whatever your company is. Mine's JV Game Studios because why not? Product name, JV FPS. I call this Call of Jimmy and default icon yep you guessed it you can drag and drop that icon straight into there so this icon will be representative when you create the game itself and that is the actual icon of the game so that little file that you click when you want to play the game on your PC that is now what it will be when we build the game so here we have settings for PC Mac Linux and we have iOS Android that is because we have in our file build settings, we have those platforms installed and ready to go. So we could build for them. So let's start with PC. Icon, obviously it's already copied across. So we don't need to worry about that. If you want to have different icons, for different sizes, that is something for you to play around with. Resolution and presentation, 
exactly what it means. Full screen mode is literally full screen. To be honest, most of these settings are pretty decent by default. You don't really need to mess around too much with them and they are all self-explanatory. So when I said splash image, we now need to drag this splash right here, there. So this basically is the image that appears on the executable file when we start the game up. Uh, we could preview it, we could see different things, logos, we don't need to worry about all these. The Unity logo there, that is by default on the free version, which is what we're doing here. That is always going to be on. You cannot turn that off unless you pay the subscription fee for the different tiers uh, with Unity itself. Uh, again, it's just self-explanatory here. Uh, next, other settings. This is where you will come to develop, uh, when you get, I should say, a good deep development cycle here and you're really into what you're creating, these kind of things will become important to a degree, but generally for testing purposes, they're not too important. XR, well, I'm not going to do this in VR, but you can if you wanted to. So moving on, if you want to do for uh, iOS, again, it's, it's the same kind of uh, settings here. It's not too important, not you know, too difficult, but these things are all what you would do. So if you're building for iOS, just take a quick look at these. They are all relative. So if you have one set for PC, it will transfer. Same with Android, uh, right here, you know, obviously it's, it's simple as it is. Uh, one thing to note here, publishing settings. Here, if you're going to publish to the Google Play Store, you would need a key, in which case you would need to create the key. Uh, that is fairly simple. It's just a case of create a new key, name it, and whatever else you do. If you publish to the Google Play Store, you would know how that works anyway. So one more thing, if we go to edit, go to project settings and go to quality. This is where we can set the different levels of quality and how we can play it. So by default, you'll see the green ones here. So PC, we've got fantastic as default. You can rename these things if you want to. So we'll call this uh, Epic, why not? So we'll play on Epic when we actually play the game in a couple of minutes time. Uh, that's all you really need to know because you have the option of changing the quality levels and changing what you can do. Uh, you know, resolutions and everything. But again, for testing purposes, this doesn't matter too much at all. It's, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. So you're saying, Jimmy, that's great. How do we build this game? I want to see this playing full screen in its own executable file. Okay, let's get to that. So I'm going to save my project. All saved. Excellent. And file. Build settings. Build and run. And let's call this uh, C... O J, short for Call of Jimmy. Oh, that's because it doesn't exist. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, let's create a new folder. I'll just call it new, new folder because why not? And I'll just do it in there. And it should build within that folder. Uh, a long time ago, when you probably about Unity 5 ish, you could actually name the executable. So I don't think it's too important. But this shouldn't take too long to build. It may take a little longer for some games, depending on the size, quality, and how much of the game is there. Again, sometimes it can take a lot longer than you would expect. So while this is building, I'm going to quickly discuss where we can go from here with development. So everything you've learned up until this point, you could implement one way or another to build your own first-person shooter game. So let's take the zombie, for example. Yes, that zombie is good, but you can apply those mechanics to any enemy that you would find. So if you find an enemy soldier, you could apply the same mechanics to that enemy soldier that we've used on the zombie. The post-processing that we've used in this tutorial, you can absolutely refine that as much as you can and just take it from there and create an awesome looking game. The level design, you can work around that. You can build something awesome with that, bring in more textures, more objects, and you can build a massive fantastic world for you to play around with. So like I said, up until this point, we've learned quite a lot. And here is where you learn for yourself. If you struggle, don't worry. I have tons and tons of other tutorials on various subjects that you could refer to. Watch, you know, and copy from them. Uh, don't forget all the assets for this series are on the website for free. And if you have any more problems, don't forget, you can always leave a comment 
and those comments will be answered try well i'd say by me but there are other people out there who are more than willing and more than knowledgeable to actually add their own uh, thoughts advice knowledge to whatever you want to know so i think ultimately this is still building still taking a bit of time uh, so yeah so ultimately with a first person shooter a lot of people want to go for things like the Call of Duty style. A lot of people want to go for Battlefield style. You could take everything from here and build that style, but there's nothing stopping you from incorporating, let's say, RPG elements into this. There's nothing stopping you incorporating platform elements into this. It's just one of those things that you can really take and you can absolutely run with. So this is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would. So I'm going to come back to this uh, when it's done. So that, uh, that took uh, longer than I thought it would, but not to worry. Uh, so as we can see here, that splash image that I originally said is right here. That's the one I was talking about. So it's not necessarily the splash screen itself. It is that splash image that appears on the configuration. We can see down here as well, our little icon is there. And our graphics quality that we set as epic is right there. So let's give this a go. Now, we're likely to come across bugs and errors within this because this is just how testing happens. You're likely to come across these things and then you would go back into the engine and fix them. So here we are. Let's go on play. Okay. Looks like there are some spiders over there. Let's go pick up a gun, shall we? So you can see how this now reacts in full screen. It's looking kind of cool. Let's go and kill our zombie. He's sneaking up on us. Ah, there we go. He's a goner. Goodbye. Oops. Camera's gone a bit funny. Sorry, that was my mouse skills. Ah, uh, spiders. Ah, they're coming at me. I uh, don't like that. And there's our insane bloom effects. So, yeah, there we go. So everything looks relatively okay and um, there is um, you know a couple of little things here and there like the minimap there looks a little bit uh, too far up the objectives need to move over but generally like I say that is how you would come back to unity and you would test these rebuild and replay I've asked thank you very much so guys it's been a fun journey I've absolutely enjoyed doing this series, and I know there is more to learn on a first-person shooter, but like I say, you can take the mechanics that you've learned and work on it and build from that. So, guys, I honestly hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Uh, there is plenty of other stuff on my channel, even more uh, different series with shooters in, first-person shooters and whatever else. So if you want to check those out, please feel free. And guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in another tutorial.